What's up everyone? Welcome back. Today we're talking tubes. So tube fishing. This is one of my favorite ways to fish big lakes. I fish Lake Erie a lot. I fish Lake St. Clair a lot. And it seems that anytime that I'm making my way out there, I'm always making sure I have a rod rigged up with a tube. I love tubes because they're very versatile. You can fish them different ways and you can get them in different sizes. And they're kind of as simple as it gets. A tube essentially imitates bait fish or crawfish. And those are pretty much the two main forages that bass love to eat. Today we're gonna break these down a little bit. I'm gonna show you guys how I rig them up. I'm gonna tell you, you know, exactly kind of how I fish them and what I fish them on. And hopefully by the end of this video, you guys will be able to get out there, pick up a tube and confidently fish it. So if you guys have never seen or used a tube before, this is what they look like. They're kind of goofy, right? They look kind of like an octopus or like a squid. It's definitely something unique, but it is no secret that these tubes have been around for a long time and they really catch fast. Now, I feel like a lot of people overlook the tube because it really gets pushed as like a smallmouth bait. You know, a lot of people think that, you know, you throw tubes for smallmouth and that's about it. I want to encourage you guys to really fish them everywhere because they do catch fish and bass love them you guys can get tubes in many different sizes you can get them you know big like this you can get them small like this one you can get them you know kind of thick you can get them thin the tube that you're going to fish is really going to depend on you know the fishing scenario and also personal preference because there's a lot of companies out there that make tubes and you know they make them all a little bit different so find which one works best for you or which one you vibe with the most and uh, make that your go-to. But it's always good to have a few different sizes in your arsenal. I try to make sure I have a little bit of everything when it comes to fishing tubes. So now let's talk about where to fish them and how to rig them. So you guys can rig a tube many different ways, but the way that you're gonna most commonly see it is going to be with a tube jig. And you know, it looks like a jig head, but it is a little bit different. As you guys can see, the lead is a lot longer. The eyelet on the hook is in a different place. This hook right here is specifically designed to pair up with a tube. There's one thing that you guys will notice with all tubes is that they are hollow. So the reason that they're hollow is so you can take one of these tube jigs and shove it right up in there and weight the whole upper half of the tube. So I'm gonna go ahead and just push this one in here. And once you get that all the way up in there, you're actually gonna take your fingers and you're going to push the eyelet through the front of the tube. So as you guys can see, you'll have the eyelet sticking out of the top and you'll have a hook sticking out of the bottom. Now, when it comes to rigging a tube like this, it's going to allow you to fish off the bottom or snap a tube. So when you guys snap a tube, it's a motion in which you fish it that actually makes this tube look like a bait fish, kind of darting through the water. So you can fish it kind of fast off the bottom, dart it through the water, or you can fish it almost like a bass jig. You can cast it out there around some rocks or maybe underneath a dock, and these appendages are gonna work almost like a skirt on a bass jig, and this guy's gonna kinda hop across the bottom like a crawfish. So you're kinda getting the two for one deal here. Those guys who like to fish a spinning reel, or you know, fish down in them rocks, snap a tube, this is gonna be the way to rig it. Another way that you guys can rig the tube is actually Texas rig. For those of you who like to fish soft plastics, you're probably familiar with the Texas rig, and it really pairs great with the tube. Find yourself an EWG hook. Make sure you try to use an EWG because when it comes to you know getting your hook set, it's gonna allow you to have more space for that tube to push back into. This is gonna be a great way for you guys to fish a tube weedless. You know, unlike the tube jig, you're not gonna be able to really get this guy around weeds and stuff like that because that exposed hook is really gonna grab on to all that gunk on the bottom. So when you guys are trying to imitate bait fish that stay along the bottom or you're fishing around any kind of cover like weeds, it's always a good idea to try and rig up Texas rig. I've found really good success even fishing ponds, Texas rigging a tube. Now my favorite way to rig a tube. This is one that I have fished a ton. 
I'm gonna give you guys a little secret here. If you guys live up north or you know you have access to Lake Erie, I'm, I can't believe I'm giving you guys a little secret here. Maybe it's not a secret, I don't know, but in my area, a lot of people don't do this, and that's fishing a small tube on a drop shot. I have found that a small tube you know, not only does it work in finesse fishing scenarios, but it has triggered bites when I am fishing in big rocks. Now, don't get me wrong. When I fish in rocks, it's great to get down in there, right? I love to get in and out of those rocks because that's where the small mouth are. That's where the large mouth are. When you're fishing big bodies of water, if you can find a big rock piling, usually you can get on some fish. One thing that I was facing every time that I was fishing tubes around big rocks was that the tube jig either got snagged up because you got a exposed hook or I'm just fraying my line a ton because you're working a tube in and out of boulders. It's just bound to happen. And when you guys are fishing in really clear water, like, you know, up in Michigan, you got Lake St. Clair, the water is crystal clear there. I'm typically fishing fluorocarbon. When it comes to fishing fluorocarbon, you gotta worry about fraying that line and there's nothing worse than breaking off because you frayed your line on a rock. So one thing that I was doing was I would run a spinning rod with braid line and I would run a thick fluorocarbon leader and I'd fish a drop shot. I would get a lot more bites because I was able to really keep that tube up above those rocks. My sinker on my drop shot would sit down on the bottom and I would pop this guy right above those rock pilings and the fish would come out and smack them. I found myself catching a ton of largemouth this way, a ton of smallmouth, and it's really just became one of my favorite ways to fish a tube. And the best part of it was if I did get snagged up in those rocks, at most I would only lose, you know, the bottom half of the drop shot. Maybe the, you know, the sinker would get hooked up in there and that would fray. You'd pop it off. You just, you know, run a new one on there. You still got to keep your tube, you got to keep your hook. You're not losing as much as an entire tube jig. So there's a lot of different ways you guys can rig a tube. You can punch them with a punching rig. You know, if you're really trying to get down on those weed mats, that's another way to do it as well. It's very versatile. So now that you guys know how to rig them, I'm gonna give you a, you know, a few tips on where I fish them. Anytime I'm fishing a big lake or body of water, like Lake Erie, Lake St. Clair, I'm always having a tube rigged up. Big rocks, sandy bottoms, main lake dams, and I'm even gonna fish them in weed mats and around docks and things like that. Anytime that you're fishing a lake that has you know, a ton of boat docks and stuff like that, don't be afraid to get a tube in there. So just find out what suits you the best, get confident, and try and fish them because a lot of people overlook it. Now, lastly, let's talk about the rod setup that you guys can fish with tubes. Again, this is gonna come down to personal preference or uh, scenario, but when it comes to fishing like bait casters, I'm using a bait caster that's like a medium or a medium heavy, generally like seven foot with a fast gear ratio reel whenever I'm fishing tubes that are heavier. So this right here is like a three eighths ounce tube jig. Whenever I'm fishing something like this, I'm gonna throw it on that bait caster. When it comes to fishing smaller tubes, I'm gonna fish a spinning rod setup. Something like 610, to seven foot medium or medium light is usually what I'm throwing, probably like three sixteenths ounce and less. So my lighter stuff, my finesse stuff, I'm going to throw on a spinning rod. Just kind of like you're fishing a neck rig. So there you guys have it. There's a quick little crash course on fishing tubes. I hope this encourages you to get out there, fish tubes a little more. And remember, tubes are not only for smallmouth. You guys can catch just as many largies as smallies using a tube so thank you guys so much for watching if you guys are new here do me a favor smash the subscribe button leave me a comment down below i love hearing from you guys but other than that i'll see you in the next one